hello guys welcome back to my channel uh, today i'm going to do a general and personality tarot reading for the actress han so hee um i've been a fan of her her work like actually for a long time uh but yeah no one requested a reading for her i know she participated in jk's uh, video 7 uh, so yes, I was thinking that we should like pull some cards to get to know her a little bit better and, and see what energies are available for her. So yeah, I hope that you enjoy this. Um, we start with the archetypes of Mystic, uh, Destroyer and Knight. So it's, it's very, actually very interesting her, her energy, like the archetypes that she got. Um, I sense a lot of, I know she's a Scorpio and definitely I can sense the intensity in here, you know. Um, here, with uh, starting with the mystic, you know, uh, she definitely is a very mystical person. She has the, the potential to transform her reality. No matter where she comes from, she has the, the, the possibility to do better, to be wiser, to she sort of has like it's not just about being intuitive it's also about like you know sort of cutting some karmas when it comes to maybe her or maybe her where she comes from her origins you know gener generational traumas you know uh, i think that she comes from a very a strong line of mystical women you know probably she i don't know her mother her grandmother were always very spiritual and but also had a very harsh life being a female so i think that in this lifetime she carries this with her um and, and i think that this is maybe what she wants to promote um even though you know the the business that she's seen is very much based on image and and also you know the the the, the society that she lives in is all about you know you you do get ahead in life because of you know beauty standards and and because of the image that you portray but i think that she <clears throat> she has this sort of personality that she she can be more if she wants to you know she can if you actually pay attention to her beyond the image or beyond the roles that she plays actually she's a very interesting female her per perspectives are very interesting um, and and I think that she has a lot of deepness definitely what she says um, is, is who she is you know if she talks about struggles if she talks about you know serious things or if she talks about struggling in the past this is not made up this is not for you know for getting people's attention or just like getting a sad background story you know like oh yes i come from a poor environment and i struggle so much to be here and now i'm happy you know for her she definitely did struggle um but i think that that um she definitely is is a very mystical person so uh, even when she, even I, I believe she shocks herself sometimes, she's like, oh my God, where did that come from? You know, why did I say this? Why did I do this? You know, this is like a lot. Like, I hope I'm not scaring anyone off, you know, because I think that there's something about her, like, like it probably, you know, because of the way some actresses act or I don't know when they are being like somehow like coached or when they are being like getting a sort of like a, tree, uh, a sort of like training, you know, somehow they tell they tell them that they should be mysterious or that they shouldn't say much or that they shouldn't talk much, you know, and sort of portray this image of like, okay, you have to be, <clears throat> you know, very selective about what you say. And she's like, no, you know, I actually cannot hold myself. I feel so much and, and I want to share it with people. I want them to see me for who I am, you know. And there's something about her like being very like magical. <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm getting that she, she does give me this very esoteric kind of vibe, you know, like, like, I don't know if maybe in the past life she was like a sort of, a sort of shaman or something like that. Or maybe in her family there are shamans. There's something about her also like coming from you know you know heritage of 
magical or gifts, you know, like, and, and for her, it is not so much about like, okay, I can see the future. It's more about like, I can transform the future. I can transform my reality and other people that are around me. I can also transform it as well, as well and get rid of obstacles or get rid of limitations or get rid of blockages. Um, because she also has like the the archetype of the destroyer. So I think that, that her role in this life, her personality is all about, you know, destroying things that are obsolete, you know, or things that no longer work or things that just like have to be over with, you know, that are very old, that are very toxic as well. You know, I think that she's someone that when she enters uh, someone's life or when she enters into a project she somehow is able to destroy how things were done in the past you know she's like the sort of like I'm destroying it in order to create something new and I think that she still doesn't realize how powerful she is I think that sometimes she thinks that maybe you know the things that get destroyed or the you know the abrupt changes that happens when she's present she sees it sort of like a curse. Maybe sometimes she gets scared of herself a bit. You know, she's like, oh my God, I provoked this. This is because of me or this ended because of me. So I wonder if there's something wrong with me. And definitely I don't think that there's something wrong with her. It's just that she has that, um, that potential and that ability to somehow the things that are fake or that are obsolete or that are like uh, BS, you know, she can remove all this, you know, she's like, okay, like I remove all this, like, like, you know, while I'm here, like this is not allowed anymore. And, and just changes start happening, you know, or she says and done some, does something and, and she creates a sort of like deep transformation where she is. Um, and then with the, or the archetype of the knight, she sort of also has this very like, like, um, she, she defends her ideals, she defends people, she puts her body to work, you know, and, and to work for justice and also to defend the weak. So I think that sometimes I also see that, that she can find herself in situations where she's like defending someone or something and she doesn't even know it you know that she's maybe she she sounds too passionate some talking about something or defending a point of view and you're like oh my like she definitely is a fighter um and and i believe that there's something about you know she's slowly like getting comfortable with the idea that it's okay to be, you know, in this archetype of the night. You know, she's like, oh, this is not so very ladylike of me. But definitely her energy is not soft, is not delicate, is not like superficial. She comes into this life to be a sort of like, you know, groundbreaking energy of like whenever, whatever she, she is, she's like, she creates a sort of chaos that that cow sort of invites the people around her to to see that some things has to change some things need to transform that some things can no longer be the same because they were fake or because they weren't stable enough so she she sort of scares herself and maybe she scares other people as well because she's like, oh, before you came into our lives, we were fine, like we were stable and you came and somehow everything is changing. So here also with the night, I think that she also maybe finds herself in situations where she's like defending someone, maybe even a stranger. And she's like, oh my God, how did I get myself into this situation? Why did I get so involved, you know? But she definitely wants to do what's right she definitely is not ignorant to other people's needs. She can empathize so much with people struggling. So she's like, you know, if I have the influence or if I have, if I have the willpower and if I see that there's something, something that is not fair done to someone else and I am seeing that, I have 
I have to you know I have to to do I have to do that you know I have to somehow like uh, you know defend defend the person that like I cannot just sit still and watch you know there's something about her also feeling very like reactive when she see that something that is unfair is happening in front of her or she hears something you know she's she I think that <coughs> she's very reactive that's why I believe that when she plays this sort of um, maybe, maybe action roles you know the roles where she has to fight someone or the roles where she's this sort of like you know this traumatized character that she fights her way through life i think that those characters are very well for her are very <coughs> are very beneficial for her energy because she, she needs to let out all her you know masculine energy out you know and her need to defend and attack the people that she's like you know you are being rude i don't like it you are being rude you are being you know, overbearing. You are, you are like um, uh, disrespectful, and I, and I, and I will tell you to your face that this is not correct. So I definitely see a woman that she can defend herself, and I think that she, she's like, she, she's sort of like in this period of her life, she's sort of tired of watching other females just do nothing. You know, in just like acting like they are they don't see anything they don't see what's wrong with with society you know she's like how can you be so like unbothered by this this is problematic like you really should stand up and and, and and do something about it you know so I can see her like really like engaging in very like in you know um in, in this, this sort of like um movements that has to do with the women's right you know with justice um, she's, she, she, she feels very motivated. I see her energy working towards this. So I don't know if maybe in the future she will be like participating in something like this or maybe I believe that she, if she has the potential to choose her roles, uh, probably her ideal roles would be roles about, about women, you know, overcoming very harsh things and she is like okay like because I think that sometimes people because of her appearance because she's beautiful they are like oh no you you would be better in this romantic comedy on this romantic k-drama and she's like you know I'm not that fragile like you know yes I'm an actress I can I can actually like I can become that but I would want to have a character with more substance you know that that's her energy also, like a lot of, you know, uh, challenges, you know, having to move her body a lot, you know, she, she loves that. Um, then the cards that she got, she got a Ten of Swords, a Seven of Cups, Three of Swords, um, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Handman. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um... I definitely think that this this uh, this woman comes from something heavy. I don't know. I see the three of swords in the middle, and I'm like, she broke up with someone, um, or she sort of went through a very like you know sad experience. I don't know if she's mourning someone, a relationship, uh, or a, a special person in her life that is no longer in there. Um, I think that she's a slowly like the cards that he got definitely are very private and are very much about her own energy. You know, I don't see that this is like okay, th there's this person here that did this, or there's this situation here with with work that created this. I think that these cards talk <coughs> mostly about her own energy. Um, I think that she um, somehow sometimes it's it's very hard to be her and and I think that she gets very overwhelmed and easily like sometimes even offended by things that happen in her life. I think that she's someone that I don't know why there's this feeling of like okay people think that I live a perfect life and that I have you know, a perfect uh, situation, and she's like, no, that's all, like, 
an illusion. You know, I sell an illusion. Here with the Seven of Cups is like, you know, like a lot of things that I thought that were stable in these last months or in this last year, maybe the year before this. You know, she's like, she, uh, she sort of discovered <coughs> that a lot of things that she was like, oh yeah, uh, I think that, that I have these connections. I feel like I have these people beside me. She sort of like, you know, understood and was able to see that there were some people that were deceiving. You know, here with the Free of Source, I think that she definitely cut connections with people that were very uh, hurtful, that she had arguments with people very close to her, that she's no longer close to these people. So I think that she's slowly like she's tired of the hip hypocrisy, you know, she's tired of lies, she's tired of people being very um, fake. I think that's something that she's like, oh yeah, I should be used to now that, that you know, people around me are fake, you know, but somehow it is still hurts her, you know, it is it's still like, uh, it, it, it's still, it's very painful for her to realize that she lives in a in in an environment well where everything is made up you know and, and and she's like oh i'm also made up you know like so she feels guilty she feels like this sort of like guilty conscience you know um but then we have um the wheel of fortune and the handman so i think that this that she's experiencing in herself it has to do with, you know, this pain that she's feeling, this deception that she's feeling, this sorrow, it sort of is a teacher, you know, she is teaching her that, that, you know, it's okay that you feel like this, but don't stay too long in that feeling of negativity or don't stay too long in that pain. Like she, she definitely felt very defeated, like uh, she maybe, maybe is slowly recovering herself, um, she's a slowly getting up, you know, she's a slowly moving, she's a slowly advancing, but I think that, that she's someone that she, she, you know, she gets her heart broken very easily, like, and I don't think that this is just about romance, I think that, that, I don't know, maybe the relationship with her, her loved ones or her family is very, is very tough, you know, it's tough to have a connection with them or it's tough to get to an agreement with them or she feels used or she feels like taken advantage of. So there's this sense of like, I really feel betrayed. Like every time I feel like I'm doing okay, you come to me and you sort of become like these emotional vampires, like you take everything away from me. And somehow I'm feeling, I'm left here feeling sad and feeling vulnerable and feeling very heartbroken so i think that that this is like also like a sort of period of her of detox detoxification of these surroundings you know like her, like having patience with herself and being like okay like you've been down you know you you've been you've been disappointed you've been sad maybe but you know you have to uh, slowly get out of this state you know this is something that a lot of scorpio people scorpio placement uh, people deal with this sort of like when you are grieving someone or when you are hurting because of a heartache or, or something that happened and affected you emotionally you somehow tend to somehow stay, become comfortable with feeling the pain and you somehow get stuck in that feeling you know that emo the becoming a sort of emo you know like emo child you know like you you become so used to feeling like heartbroken that you're like okay this is my muse you know okay I, I guess I came to this life to suffer so you sort of get attached to the feeling of like okay I'm I'm sad you know nobody loves me nobody cares about me you know and and, and, and this sort of like self-talk that she has about feeling blue and feeling angry and, and feeling betrayed, you know, and this sort of been also, you know, probably this also has to do with, with her dealing with, with you know, um, playing roles that also are very sad, 
you know, or, or roles that are very traumatizing for her emotionally. So she needs to slowly like move on from those sensations, you know, from those feelings. It's like get out of there, get out of that character. That character is not you. Like get out, get out of that dark place, you know, of the dark night of the soul. You get out of this, you know, because like I mentioned at the beginning, she's very sensitive. So if she stays too long attached to that, you know, she can actually get like stuck. With the Wheel of Fortune and the Handman, I think that she needs time to slowly move on. Life is going to move on, but I think that <clears throat> she will not be able to actually make like a huge advance or, or move until she recognizes certain things. You know, with the Handman, it's like, <clears throat> okay, maybe, you know, she wants to start doing something new and some unexpected things happen, you know, I don't see nothing much about work or f future projects. So I don't know, you know, I don't know what's going on with her in that sense. But I think that, that you know, she will slowly make advances, she will slowly move on, you know, her, her circumstances are going to change, are going to be brighter, are going to be more positive. But first, she needs to stop and reflect about what this is happening to her, you know, and what is the, the nature of this? What is the lesson behind everything that she is, like, dealing with? So this is a huge, like, a sort of teacher for her, you know. It's like, okay, this that you went through or this that you are experiencing, this is, it, it, you have to stop and observe, you cannot just like run away from this like this has been happening for a while so you need to sort of recognize that maybe you are repeating a pattern or maybe there's something that you haven't resolved yet so you know it's a sort of like take your time before you move on to something else take your time and deal with this do not refuse to see what this is about like contemplate contemplate accept integrate and then move on then things are slowly <coughs> going to start to move more freely but for now i see her very like stagnant in this feeling but yeah it's it's all about you know her like also like not resisting that yeah maybe these moments in her life are very are the time is passing very slow or maybe she's not getting what she wants so there's a, a feeling a, a very like pessimist feeling of like, okay, this this year is not going like the way I wanted it to be, you know. So I think that definitely she's like, okay, okay, I, I have to, I have to face this, you know, I have to move on. But at the same time, I have to face why do I put myself in these situations and not, not deny it, okay. So yeah, guys, this is all I have for her. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.